Good morning, it's uh, 19th of August, it's Friday, end of a week, it's 20 to 8 and we're just about to get started work, we're a little bit late this morning and uh, in this video I'm going to continue from where we left off in the last video which was the work we did in January and in that you recall I think we were doing the uh, capping rail, this section of capping rail here which you can see is all finished now. Um, in this video I'm going to start off by showing you how we cut this hole through here. That's the starboard side horse hole for our starboard side anchor. And uh, ironically this week I'll show you how we went about cutting it. All new, remember all new techniques to us. This is not something we knew. I learned something almost every day here. It's fantastic. Um, so uh, cutting uh, that hole, I'll show you how we went about cutting that hole. And ironically I literally just yesterday Randy and I finished that off so although we cut it in January what happened was in the middle of doing that work we suddenly got the opportunity to go into dry dock which is just over there you can see there's the Kathleen and May covered up in the dry dock there um, so back in January at the end of this video uh, we'll be going in this episode I mean we will be going into dry dock which will be the subject of next our next video which hopefully will be a week or two away and uh, that was an exciting time because we just had a crazy crazy three weeks in there you won't want to miss it because there's a huge amount of work we did in those three weeks uh, and uh, very different from the work we've been doing up until then because that was the first time we'd really been able to get to the below the water line part of the boat the hull we knew there was issues we knew there was work to be done but we hadn't seen it for five years so that was quite an interesting time mad amount of work and really not very good weather conditions so it was really hard work actually anyway the irony was it is that they literally although the video you're looking at about to see now which shows how we went about doing this uh, we got caught up on one little thing which was this bracket everything fitted I don't know how much of this you can see everything all this fitted nicely except for this bracket because all this is changed this is a new knight's head here and the shape is slightly changed this arm here didn't fit onto the end of this roller here and uh, we've only just got round to cutting and re-welding this uh, Jamie did that a um, couple of days ago and we've also put a nice new stem strap all the way down our uh, bow stem there which is really nice all this is all finished and toughened up now really exciting we're moving on at a pace and in this episode I'm going to show you how we learnt to do mortise and tenon joints which is also quite interesting so there's that uh, but before I show you all that I just thought I'd show you what we've been doing currently we've put all the chain plates on now so main mast and mizzen mast chain plates including the new ones that we uh, designed or Dominic designed for our top mast shrouds remember we only had two mizzen chain plates now we've got three on each side and that worked all well but it was quite complicated but that will come up in a in a coming episode quite soon uh, but uh, my job today and in the last few days what I've done is cut these little inserts I don't know how well that will show up there's a little insert a uh, quarter inch deep insert top and bottom of these tensions and you can see what I'm what the reason for those is because I'm going to fit what I think in the industry are called noggins which are bits of timber that go between uh, these up uh, these stanchions here they'll be top and bottom I think I've called them joggles but I think in the industry they call them noggins um, anyway so there's going to be sl slightly curved three inch wide oak noggings between the stanchions all the way across where that rail is following the curvature of that rail which is why it's there and then the same at the bottom and the reason for that is because if I just demonstrate with this piece here the bulwarks the bulwark planks are all horizontal up to this point here and in this curvature around the back they're slats so they sit they sit like that if you like so the slats will move all the way around the back of the boat like that and of course they need something to be fixed to so they'll be fixed to these noggins top and bottom um, that I'm that I that uh, I'm about to do the templates for so as I say I've got my template material that will take me a couple of days to do that it's quite an interesting process how you do that it's another great skill or technique that I've learned 
uh, doing this job and that's the power of templating and um, it comes into so many of the things that you you know so many of the so many of the um, renovation jobs that we've done on the boat it starts with a good template so that's all coming up later but for this episode as I say it's all about cutting big holes and mortise and tenon joints so hope you enjoy it uh, see you later about this lump here this is the this is the horse hole through which our anchor chain and anchor actually fit the one on the starboard side that's the plow anchor and this this piece here I'll show you a photograph of it later on um, has to go through this knight's head and it has to come out in exactly the right place because the way that this is constructed the angle between this flange here which sits on the outside of the knight's head on the outside of the bulwark planks and the angle of the actual pipe itself is fixed and that has to fit when it go when it fits through here it has to be in line with the rollers this roller on here, on the anchor roller, has to be in line, of course, uh, with the winch which will sit there, which I mocked up earlier. I've got to drill a very large hole through that to get that piece of equipment through. And quite frankly, the chances of me getting it absolutely perfect first time is probably zero, but you've got to get as close as you can. There will be some wriggle room, of course. You can open up the hole larger and then fill it uh, with some um, uh, mastic or something, you know, later on. So there, are, you know, there, there is a little bit of wriggle room, but if, but not too much. You've got to get it pretty much right first time. Is I've um, made a piece of wood with a 45 degree angle here, so that I have a uh, flat surface um, perpendicular to the way I'm drilling. So the hole cutter, all the teeth will engage on that surface in one go. So I can just show you that. I've just got a few big chunks of wood you can see here and just glued two pieces together. This will sit on there. So, so the hole cutter will follow that line and I should get a nice 140 millimeter diameter hole right the way through. That's the plan. So I'm going to have a bar now, just a plain bar that will fit in, fit in here with a hole cutter welded to it here and as I feed it in the hole cutter should start should cut through there.
that seem to be Don't drop it, Reggie. Don't drop it. If you drop it, there's going to be trouble. Whew. So yeah, it fits fine, but not the not the bracket. It's going to have to be more defined. So um, yeah, that seems to have worked quite well. So now I've just got to cut the mortises. And I'm going to mark these now. I'm going to mark with a pen the area that needs to be cut out, and then the templates are done with. They've finished. Their life is over. And then I just have to cut the depths. So with those marked, I can now actually take these off. You can see where I just put a few dubs of glue and that's what I'm left with. So now I know the shape. Let's take that one off. We can reuse these templates, by the way. You just uh, pull them apart and take the glue off if necessary. Um, I often don't use them because it's quick, quicker and easier to just to use new new bits um, by the time you've gone to the trouble of getting all the glue off them see we've got a sheet of this stuff here and we just cut cut strips of it useful for all sorts of templates the line there and that's left three quarters of an inch I'll leave the line because the wood is just a shy under three quarters just trim the tops off all of these so that they're all now three quarters of an inch just so all the tenons are done. Now I'm going to cut the mortise. Now the way I do this, I've got some, uh, these are called forcener bits. The mortise has got to be an inch and a half wide. And that is an inch and three eighths, which is perfect. If I got one at an inch and a half, it would mean I'd have to be extremely precise. Otherwise my hole would be oversized. So an inch and three eighths is great. So the only thing with this joint, it does have to be very precise. You have to cut very precisely, otherwise it won't sit down, will it? And it won't work either. The, the actual joint won't be very strong if you don't have it tight. So now the next hole, I just slightly overlap it. And then as you see, I'll cut, then I have less to cut out later on. So that's the main part. So now I'm just going to cut around the edge.
what I'm going to do now is what I did the last time. I'm just going to mark on, put a mark on here at three quarters of an inch. I can see how deep to go, but that's the basics. And then I can chisel these last bits out, which I'll show you in a second. So there you go. So I just need to go down to that line. telling you this is the right way of doing it this is just for an amateur like me this works very good that's three quarters nicely around there okay remember I'm not a shipwright or a woodworker so anyone can use this if I can do it anyone can do that so there you go that's a pretty nice Maltese I'll uh, just play in the, the back of this plank just to take any high spots off and then I'll bring you back when we put it into position and see if it all fits hey, no. Look at that, That's solid. Um, it's really down to nicely actually, it's beautiful. Um, see it's in tight there. I think there may be some fiddling about just up here. I'm not sure, I'll have to clamp it down. Um, this plank is quite misshapen. So I'll have to clamp it all down to get a true view of this part of it. Okay, I've got the capping rail where I need it. I've made lots of alterations. You can see it's uh, clamped firmly in place here. And I thought I'd just make a couple of uh, general observations. The, this, after I first cut it and fitted it, it fitted pretty good. It's been on, I think, probably about six, seven or eight times I've had it on and off. And you can tell by the way it's all clamped in position with all these clamps that having to take them all off and put them all back again is quite tedious especially as you you need to get it nice and tight on these scarf joints for instance and that's the point you can't when you're um, when you're making alterations uh, when you have to get it off and put it back on again you can't put it on loosely uh, to check it. It has to be put firmly where it's going to end up, which means because you're working to uh, small uh, tolerances, it, you have to go to a lot of trouble to get it nice and tightly in position. There's no point in getting it on loosely because then you don't know where you need to make the alterations. In these joints here, you want all this tight. You want tight fitting, tight fitting joints <laughs> uh, underneath, up against the stanchions. You don't want big gaps, for instance, between that and the stanchion so on that one there that's pretty good let's have a look at this one yeah you see this it's a nice tight fit on the stanchion there it sits flat and nicely on the stanchion uh, that's pretty good that's nice there's no kinks there's no obvious kinks where it bends up and down you don't want it like a a wave form all the way down there you want a nice shear as i'll show you from the this all three pieces are ready now to be fitted so you've got patience huge amount of patience with jobs like this it was the same when I did the covering boards on and off and on and off and on and off and it was taking half an hour every single time to get it all set up again you just have to show patience you know there's there's no two ways about it you know there's no shortcuts so there you go so what I'm gonna do now now that it's all clamped in position position I've got nice tight joints on my scarf joints there I'm now going to drill the holes for the bolts that are going to hold these scarves together so there's going to be one through here and uh, one through there i'll have to move that clamp to do that one 